indeed. Welcome to the culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Roger Mohammed. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Folks, we got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, let's talk about what President Biden is planning to announce as he's talking about relieving the debt of more Americans from their student loans. We'll give you the latest with that. Also, we got to bring you up to speed on the issue of voting rights, how the voting rights bill is under attack and how a lot of different states are making it harder. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. He stoked racial violence, attacked voting rights, and if reelected, vowed to be a dictator and, quote, get revenge. We can't go back. As president, I put money in pockets, creating millions of new jobs, and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Game on. State of the Union 2024. Huge night for President Joe Biden. This was a CBS receipts type of night. Yes. He dragged the hell out of the Supreme Court. And he <laughs> said, y'all gonna see the power of women. Trump's brain is melting as we speak. We want to organize from a place of strength. There's no confusion whatsoever about what they've done and what they plan to do. What Donald Trump is doing is presenting a fallacy. He is convincing them that he's all in it for them when in fact he's all in it for himself. We do not feel Joe Biden in spite of the success that have taken place during this administration economically. There are too many things where we do not feel like he's had our back. You should also be investing in the barbershops and the beauty salons and the hookah bars and the folks who are going to the club and there's a way to actually get them registered because we've done it before. But if you don't have folks who understand that dynamic, then you're missing a big opportunity. So we said we just celebrated. For what? Why did you go to Selma to celebrate rather than recommit yourself to the fight if the very thing we went to celebrate has been gutted? Republicans did not support a lot of the bills that were necessary to keep the country fluid. You can't only love your country when you win, right? Oh, no. You guys don't want another $2 trillion tax cut? This was absolutely the knockdown drag out that we were really waiting for. Black voters are the base. They're the most important base of the Democratic Party. 
There was very few language in this speech at the time we see an attack on black history, an attack on DEI. The end of the BLM racial reckoning thing has come to a complete end because there was nothing in this speech for that. Our movement has never been grounded in two-party politics in this country. All of our movements ultimately get co-opted by a state that is anti-black. They called the old because they knew the way, and they called the young because they were strong. And I believe there is a good combination of that, but we can have ideas and we can have visions and dreams, but we have to have our young people also working beside us because they are strong, and they will run that race, and they will run it to the end. Activists, organizers, and young people have been pushing this administration to be on the right side of history and to do something about the issues that they care about. While the Ukraine and Palestine are critical issues. They are not the only global issues. Not a single black person who should ever let it come out their mouth that I'm tired. Because there is somebody else who came before us who didn't stop fighting. All right, folks, welcome back to The Culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Folks, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, First, we want to discuss President Biden. But before we do so, let's start letting you know, folks, we are streaming live on our our website at blackstarnetwork.com. Just go to our website today, download the app for free, follow us on social media at Black Star Network. And we ask that you uh, give you a little something, something to support us in this great work that we are doing. So make sure you do your part and support us here at Black Star Network. We would love to connect with you and build with you. And more importantly, we would love to continue the great work we are embarked on. So again, go to our website today and we thank you for your support. We're also streaming live on Amazon platforms. You can check us out on Amazon, on your Amazon News on Fire TV. You can find us on the Amazon Prime Video app. So just go to Prime Video for our app under Live TV, The News, or find us on Amazon.com under Prime Video, then Live TV, The News. We're also on Plex TV, or on Freebie, excuse me, on the Freebie Network, on now for news. Check, just check this out there on the Freebie Network, as well as Plex TV, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Search for Black Star Network or find us under Live TV, The News and Opinion. And we are currently uh, streaming on Big Brother Roland Martin's social media pages of his Facebook page, YouTube channel. There we go. Big shout out to the online culture crew that's checking in from all around the country as we are having this conversation and having this broadcast. And folks, it is a phenomenal day. It is, of course, we're going to get into more details on later on in the show. But if you haven't seen the celestial phenomenon known as Eclipse 2024, you might be seeing it later on today, depending on what part of the country you're in. Here's some images right now. We have been doing our part here at Black Star Network to stream in some of the 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 the, um, the totality of the eclipse as it travels through the United States, where they said 99% of the country's population should be able to get a glimpse of it or have gotten a glimpse of it once it completes its path. So this is very very and this is this is one of those things where it doesn't happen often to see a total eclipse. So there are a lot of people who are just having watch parties and viewing parties, and there's so much to discuss about it. We're going to actually check in with Dr. Bridget for this week's uh, Reclaim Your Wellness segment to talk a little bit more about that. But uh, definitely, definitely, if you haven't seen it, if you're in a part of the country that hasn't seen it, it is a sight to behold. So we'll get to that. First, let me just share you and bring up to speed what the latest, um, the latest coming out of the Biden administration, folks, where President Biden is uh, expected to re- relieve more student debt uh, as a result of his plan to keep his promise of making sure that Americans um, will not be saddled with more financial burden from from their time in school. Let me just share with you the latest as it comes across the report. This one's from NBC News, folks. And the the president is saying that this new plan will provide millions for student debt relief. Millions, already more than 30 million Americans would benefit from the plans in combination with other actions the administration has taken, according to the White House. Let me share with you this uh, this piece coming here. 
Take a look at this, folks, as the president talks about this and his administration moves forward. The administration new plans in combination with previous action that's taken will provide student debt relief to more than 30 million Americans, according to the White House. The administration's actions taken together will eliminate accrued interest for 23 million borrowers, cancel the full amount of student debt for more than 4 million borrowers, and provide at least $5,000 in debt relief to more than 10 million others. The plans are also part of an effort by the administration to address the disproportionate burden of student debt that Black, Latino, and other borrowers of vulnerable communities face. I want to get your take on this, folks. As we talk a little bit about this, the president is moving forward. He's just chugging along on making sure that he keeps his campaign promise uh, that he will eliminate student debt. 30 million people in this country have been affected by some of these latest actions and policies. And of course, you remember the Supreme Court had made the decision saying that he could not do a, a, a um, what I would say, a more of like a universal plan to relieve student debt. It was not, it, it, that was not deemed constitutional. So now the president had to regroup his advisors, his team had to regroup and they had to figure out other ways. And so they kind of been doing like what I would say like patchwork on this process, on this whole issue, doing millions, you know, relieving debt here, relieving debt there, but just kind of slowly working through as many student debt loan borrowers there are to try to get this. This is why this is planned. And the White House is saying that it's a combination of actions as a result of that, because they've had to do it in small pieces rather than one large chunk. So I want to get your take on this, crew. What's your, what's your, what's your take on this um, and how you feel about this whole process that the president has taken? He's trying to do his best to relieve the debt. The last time he relieved the debt, y'all remember, folks, he talked about those who worked in, like, civil service. You're talking about teachers and police officers and firefighters and, those, and, and folks who do that type of work. And... Then he talked about if you've had debt for 10 years, he does that type of work. So we're looking at something very, very different. Uh, the president, he gave his remarks when he was visiting Wisconsin as they're getting prepared for their primary there. He said, this relief can be life changing. Folks, I will never stop to deliver student debt relief for hardworking Americans. And it's only in the interest of America that we do it again, that we do it. And again, it's for the good of our economy that's growing stronger and stronger, and it is. By freeing millions of Americans from this crushing debt, it means they can finally get on with their lives instead of their lives being put on hold. All right, let me hear what y'all got to say about this, crew, as we talk about this. Um, real Brooklyn, you said wondering if people who use their student loans for a real degree is needing student debt relief. That's a great question. Uh, that's a great question. Do they really need it? Uh, well, we, I hope so. I hope so. But even if you are still working in, here's my take, even if you are still working in your field, that debt can be a, a, a burden. You know what I mean, real Brooklyn. So, you know, the, the debt is debt. It, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't have any name on it. It's debt. It's just got to be paid. So, you know, I, I can only imagine if you're a teacher, for example, yeah, you're doing the work that you were trained to do, but at the end of the day, you may not be making enough to be paying back on your debt and to live and to all of those other things that's required. So the debt still needs to happen. Uh, let me see here. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else, who else was said around here? Because I think I saw this. Um, Cindy D, you said all degrees are real degrees. No one can take your education away from you. Absolutely, no one can do that. Absolutely. Um, and again, I want to go back to that point that I made. The new plans of the administration's latest efforts to, according to NBC, that they relieved to the, the, the borrowers of student loan debt because of the Supreme Court striking down his original plan to cancel up to $20,000 in debt for 43 million eligible borrowers. So we're at 30 million right now. The big number that he originally wanted to work on was 43 million. So you got 13 million people that are still saddled with this debt. And um, it's going to be interesting how he's planning to do this um, and moving forward. How important is this? That's the big question. How important will this be 
And I know we're not going to have time today to talk about this, but I know that there are, are many bigger questions as to whether this really does close the economic, the wealth gap between black and white students, between black and white families and professionals, because that's part of the effort, right? Are we going to see any type of close on that issue? Let me see here. Uh, Stephanie Humphrey Channel, check it in. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You said, I am glad President Biden is pushing forward in his debt relief. And while it doesn't affect me, but I am excited for those who are being helped. Absolutely. Um, Mingling Natasha Serge, you are not happy about this. I mean, you, you said Biden has become a one trick pony. There are other issues and bigger fish to fry out here. Mm. I hear you. I definitely hear you. But this was something that he promised. This was something that he promised, and he's trying to hold on to that. Uh, Karen, Karen, my sister Karen Carter, you said this is important for those who don't come from privilege. Buying power and life decisions are drastically impacted when students graduate buried with high student loan debt. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a huge burden. It is, it's, it's like you're just being locked up. You got handcuffs on your on your whole future because this stuff carries along with you, regardless of where you are in your finances. And, and you and I, everybody should know that in 2024, nothing is constant. In 2024, there is no guarantee that the money you're making yesterday or the money making today will be the same amount of money you're making tomorrow. So I'm right there with you, Karen. Thank you so much for checking in. All right, look, um, we're going to take another quick pause. When we come forward, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the Voting Rights Act. Let's talk about how there are some serious challenges on the table facing Black and other voters um, who are often been marginalized from the polls. We're going to check in with Pastor Wendell Griffin to talk about some of the latest actions in Arkansas, South Carolina, and other places. Stay with us, folks. We would love to hear what you got to say. Do be a part of the conversation in the chat. And stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. As president, I put money in pockets and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. I need you to scream for your new beginning. Five, four, three, two. All right, folks, welcome back to The Culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Uh, folks, let's switch gears. We talked a little bit about what the president is planning to do around student loan debts. But 
there is still the larger challenge of how the administration and the country is going to deal with an other pressing issue that many black leaders are saying the president has been too mum about, which is the issue of voting rights in this country. And as we know, the voting rights bill has been uh, gutted. And more importantly, there are great concerns that in this up upcoming election cycle, that it, based upon state laws and rules and regulations, that a lot of people are going to be discouraged from going to the polls. And so we're seeing this on a national level where there are so many, especially in like Republican controlled states, that there are so many um, uh, boundaries and so many, so much red tape that Americans are finding it harder and harder, according to one Washington Post article that said that Americans are finding it harder and harder to go to the polls and so today we wanted to just share and have this conversation about what we can expect to see and what we can expect to experience this upcoming November. And joining me right now is a brother who is certainly no stranger to us here on the uh, the culture here on the Black Star Network. We're joined by Pastor Wendell Griffin. Pastor, thank you so much, dear brother, for joining us once again. As you're doing the work, you are a retired state judge, you are an author, and you are an advocate of uh, making sure that political engagement is high on the priority for Black America. So I thank you, dear brother, for joining me once again. Good to see you again, brother. How you been? I've been good, Pastor. How are you, sir? I'm doing. I'm doing fine. Hey, we're still fighting this fight, aren't we? Oh, we still fighting the fight, Pastor. We are still fighting the fight. Uh, let's talk a little bit about first in your home state of Arkansas how the Arkansas Supreme Court, they upheld controversial voting laws. Uh, they allow four voting laws that many critics are calling restrictive to go back into an effect in a decision on this past Friday that based on what it was reported. Um, and you put it in there, I mean, when when you were asked to, your, your take on it as a, as a circuit court judge, retired judge, you, you said that these laws violate the Arkansas Constitution. But let's talk a little bit about these laws. The first one being Act 249 requires voters with provisional ballots to submit copies of IDs by the Monday after an election. The second one, Act 736, requires a voter's signature on an absentee ballot to be checked against their voter registration. The third one is Act 728, prohibits anyone from standing within 100 feet of a polling place except to stand in line to vote. And then the fourth one, Act 973, changes the deadline for a mail-in ballot to the Friday before an election. Previously, it was the Monday before. All right, Pastor, talk to me. What do you see happening here? What's going on in the state of Arkansas? Well, let's, let's, let's put this in, in context. And thank you for bringing this in the Arkansas context. The good news is that we don't yet know. We don't yet know what the Arkansas Supreme Court is going to do, because as of last Friday, they had not yet definitively ruled on the appeal from my 2022 ruling. They just simply had stayed my ruling that declared those laws unconstitutional, which means that in 2023 and 2024, Arkansas elections are still being held under those unconstitutional statutes that were passed by the Arkansas legislature after Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. Let me just put it all in context. The Washington Post article you referred to, Brother Faranji, is right on time. Comes out, comes out today. Talks about North Carolina. Talks about Georgia. Two battleground states talks about Arizona and Nevada, battleground states talks about Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, battleground states. The in these battleground states, Arkansas is not one of them, but in these battleground states, Republican legislators have worked after 2020 to make it more difficult to vote. <clears throat> Arkansas did it in 2021. And I declared all four of those laws unconstitutional, but the Arkansas Supreme Court has yet to rule on the appeal. The decision that I rendered was stayed, was held up by the Arkansas Supreme Court. They asked me to enter a stay. I refused to when I was on the bench. I said, no, no, there are no grounds for a stay. When a judge rules something on an injunction, 
the only reason you can enter a stay is if there is a reasonable likelihood that the ruling is incorrect. And there were no reasons given, not one, for this decision I made in 2020 to be incorrect. So I said, no, no stay. But the Arkansas Supreme Court, without giving any reason, entered a stay. Mm. Now, that's on the Arkansas Supreme Court level in Georgia and North Carolina. In North Carolina, you've got a Republican legislature and a Democratic governor. North Carolina is making it harder for folks to get access to the absentee ballots. They're requiring for the first time in a presidential election, for the first time ever in a presidential election, they're requiring that you show a voter ID. Now, apparently people didn't have any trouble believing that you were who you said you were in North Carolina until Donald Trump lost mm. in 2020. But mm. these laws have come up in the wake of Donald Trump's defeat in 2020, and they raise one big question. They raise this question. All these laws are based on one premise, that there is some reason why we should distrust the integrity of elections in the United States. Now, mm. who's, the one, who's the one person who has been saying that? Donald Trump. John Trump. Trump. Right. The loser right. in chief. Now, it's, it's, like, it's like me losing a game with LeBron James and saying all of a sudden, we got to change the rules of basketball because I lost. Right, 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 right. If I can't play and I lost, Take my butt whipping and go home and hush. Right. Don't fuss up the reps and try to change the game. But, but we're seeing, and, 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 and Pastor, we're, we're seeing this, and we got to take another pause, but we're seeing this happening all across the country where the rules are changing. And for black voters, I mean, for black folk, you and I, we, we do this. This is the stuff that we do. We read about this stuff. We stay up on this stuff. But yeah. A lot of black people in the country, they don't they're not keeping up with the latest law changes or what, the, you know, because all folks want to do. We have been emphasizing and I'm saying we as a people just go to the polls. Yeah. But how many of us are tracking how these decisions are affecting whether or how we go to the polls? Very few of us. I can tell you that right now with 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 with, with certainty. Very few of us are watching states and lawmakers make these decisions and say, oh, OK, this is going to be a problem in November. This is going to be a problem here and there. Very few of us. So I, I want to kind of get your take on what are some of the things that black folks can do now, especially in states like Arkansas and South Carolina and Florida and then all these other states. So I want to get your take on that. We're going to take another quick pause. When we come forward, let's continue the conversation with Pastor and, and, and retired Judge Wendell Griffith. And of course, with you, post your comments, share your thoughts, and let's continue the discussion. Stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. something I want to tell you. I am running for president. Of the United States? Holy. I'm paving the road for a lot of other people looking like me to get elected. Brooklyn's first black representative. You're about to make history. You want to be president? You ain't no man. Maybe we should find your mother. All you got is your one vote. You sound just like every other politician. Do I look like every other politician? Freedom! Truly, you can't win. And why can't I win? I have an opportunity to make a difference. Creation! This isn't a campaign. 
It's a joke. The only thing anybody's gonna remember is that there were a bunch of black folks who made fools of themselves. I'll kill you! See too much suffering. And I don't know how to not try. We're living it proud. I don't think I'm special. I just want to remind people what's possible. We need something that's going to make some noise. The Black Panthers and Shirley Chisholm. It's like thunder and lightning. I'm going to force all the politicians to be held accountable. You won't do all that. A school teacher from Brooklyn. Harriet was just a slave. Rosa was just a domestic. What is it you do for a living again? Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! A real uh, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? All right, folks, welcome back to The Culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. I'm joined by retired uh, circuit court judge and pastor Wendell Griffin as we talk about the latest uh, moves in restricting voters from going to the polls in states all across the country. And uh, the pastor, you were just, uh, pastor, you were just talking about what's going on in the state of Arkansas your lawsuit that uh, against the state, the fact that they are putting some 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 things in action that you believe are against the Constitution, against the state of Arkansas, <clears throat> excuse me. And then when we look at the bigger picture, that there are problems all over this country. Black folks are everywhere. And I'm going to go back to this idea, Pastor, and you and I know it. Folks aren't tracking. You know, a lot of our people, I don't, and I'm, I'm saying this with certainty, I don't think a lot of our people are tracking what this whole situation is looking like, what the decisions are, what the progress will be, all of these things. That's, that's, the, the, that's the few of us who, who, who tune in in that way. Yeah. But for those who aren't tracking this and they are just being told, look, all you got to do is go to the polls, and they are planning to go to the polls, but they're not aware of some of these barriers and the red tape, what do they do in a time like this? Two things, and I think you hit it on the head, Brother Faraji. First of all, be aware and then prepare. Be aware and then prepare. And I thank you for doing the awareness part because you're shining a spotlight on these voting changes. For instance, in Arkansas and in Georgia, the, 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 the Washington Post article you refer to on the lead-in refers to changes that were made to voting rights laws, voting laws in Georgia. In a law passed by the legislature in 2021, drew headlines and was criticized because it, like Arkansas, limits handing out food or water to folks who stand in line. Now we know in our voting, in black voting districts, long lines are a reality. So what do we do? We have to prepare. We now all have to be aware and therefore we prepare. If these laws are going to be in place, then I'm going to have to prepare a, if I'm going to stand in line, I have to take my folding chair with me. Hello. Right. Take me, take me some extra water right. and I'm going to have to have me enough water to make me sure that I have enough water, but I need to take some water for somebody else who's standing in line because some of our seniors can't stand in line a long time. Right. And they can't carry water. And the laws prohibit you from bringing water to them. So those of us who can have to help. It's just like the Underground Railroad, except it's going to have to be above ground. 
Mm. Mm. One of our sisters, Corinna Denise, one of our great uh, culture crew members and contributor here, she said, Black folks better learn how to track and quick. Get to tracking or live with the damage. That's our choice. I'll take the track. I'll be damned if they screw us over. Not on my watch. So right we do on. have young leaders, young, you know, that, that fire and passionate folks that are watching this whole thing. But I think it comes down to action, which is what type of action can can states do? Well, can folks in, in Arkansas do like if, if are we talking about legal action? Are we talking about protesting, using that as a strategy? Are we talking about what at this point, Pastor? Well, the good thing is that the folks in Arkansas did file the legal action and they won. Hello? Right. They won in 2022 because I ruled in their favor that those laws that were making it more restrictive for voting access, whether it's voter ID or signature match or, or the, the filing of absentee ballots, or returning your provisional proof of uh, your ID, proof, proof of your identity, because if you didn't have your ID at the time you voted, you could vote a provisional ballot, but you had to return with a proof of your, your ID by a certain date. I ruled that those unconstitutional. They won that, but that's on appeal. What do we do in the meantime? In the meantime, we got, hey, let's get our IDs together. Number two, let's get our organizations, our divine nine, our fraternal groups, our sorority groups, our churches, our Masonic lodges, Eastern stars, notable people in, put together and say, listen, we're going to make sure that before we have these elections, we have water lined up, we have chairs lined up, and we say this is going to be setting up because we're not going to be blocked away from the polls. You don't want us to vote. You don't want us to register to vote. We're going to register to vote. We're going to know what to vote for, and we're going to show up to vote, and we're going to be prepared with our stuff. So and what, what do you say, what do, what, and, and Pastor, what do we say to those who have been disenfranchised? I mean, these are, and when I talk to disenfranchised voters, these aren't people that just don't care. Right. These are people who have cared, and the reason that they are disenfranchised is because they were living by one expectation, and then the circumstance has changed, the ball, the, the game has changed, and then now they feel like, you know what, what, what are we doing this for? So what do you say to disenfranchised black voters out there today? Well, I think you mean disenchanted black voters. And disenchanted, I, I, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, yes, and, 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 and that's real, Brother Faraji, that's real. Now, I want to say this point blank, and I think I've said this before, disenchantment is real. However, let's think of it in the sports analogy. If we know that folks are going to foul us, we have to prepare to be fouled and prepare to make the play anyway. We can't refuse to show up for the game because we're going to get fouled. Satchel Page said it right. Some games you win, some games you lose, some games get caught on counter rain, but you got to dress out. Mm. You can't win if you don't dress out and show up. And so disenchantment is real, but we cannot allow disenchantment to cause our defeat. You can lose a game because, because you don't show up. That's right. And if right. And, 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 and I like to tell people, you know, what I, I think I heard some basketball players say, the only reason they foul me hard is because they know I can play. Mm. They don't want us to play. The whole game about these voter changing laws is because they know what's happened. After 2008, after Obama won in 2008, and then won again in 2012, despite all that Trump did, you recall but Trump said he wasn't born in the United States. We tried to change the voting rights, voting rules then. Then Obama won. In 2013, the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act. But in 2020, black folks and other folks still showed up again and voted Trump out. Mm. Voted Trump out. So, yeah, they fouled us. And remember, 2020 was during the pandemic. Right, right. And we showed up during the pandemic. So we right. know we can play. And the reason why we're getting fouled is because we can play and because when we play, we 
change the games. We win games. And so the enchant disenchantment issue is real, but let's just tell one another, listen, come to the huddle, shake it off. That's the code, old coach say, shake it off. Let's win the next play because the only reason they're fouling us is because we can play. Let's go to the free throw now, make our free throw shots, and then get back on defense and play the pass, get the, get the ball back again. There it is. Look, I got to take another pause. I want to get a final remark from you, Pastor. Stay with us, folks. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse and black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. He stoked racial violence, attacked voting rights, and if reelected, vowed to be a dictator and, quote, get revenge. We can't go back. As president, I put money in pockets, creating millions of new jobs, and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Terry and I, we couldn't play in the white clubs in Minnesota. It felt like such a, um, you know, strength through adversity type mm -hmm. moment that I think black people just have to go through. You know, we have to figure it out. You know, right. we make we make you know lemons out of lemonade. But there's a reason we rented a ballroom, did our own show, promoted it, got like 1,500 people to come out. Clubs were sitting empty. They were like, where's everybody at? And they said, they're down watching the band you wouldn't hire. So it taught us not only that we had to be, we had the talent of musicians, but we also had the, ta had the talent of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a seat at the table. It's like, no, let's build the table. That's right. We got to build the table. And, That's right. and that was the thing. And of course, after that, we got all kinds of offers. Of course. Right, to come play in the clubs. But we didn't do it. We You're said, like, no, we're good. No, we're good. We're good. And that's what put us on a path of national. And of course, when Prince made it, then it was like, okay, we, we see it can be done. All right, folks, welcome back to the culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. I've been joined by my brother, Pastor Wendell Griffin, who is a retired circuit court judge, as he's been talking to us a little bit about some of the voting challenges and what we can do to overcome some of these challenges. Pastor, we got a few moments left, but I wanted to kind of get your take on this because I've been reading that, and particularly in South Carolina and Florida, there has been a lot of... Um, legal or uh, some lawsuits uh, that have been filed and more importantly, legal conversations about the re the uh, these discriminatory maps. Yeah. And, and I want to kind of get you to just kind of pick your brain on this fast because how important for those who may not know the significance of the redrawing of maps in districts, what is that there? Is this the, the core of the issue that, that when, and I, we got to say, because one of our watchers just said, who is the they? When you're talking about Republicans who are coming into power and they start to redraw these maps and they start to move the lines of which districts it takes what and all of these things. Is this, is this the core of the issue in terms of us getting the, the, the voting power that we have been yearning for? Is this the core of the problem, these discriminatory maps? I think that the core of the problem is that the demographics have changed such a point to such a point in states like North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, uh, that the Republicans realize that 
unless they redraw maps, the electoral college, remember the electoral college is where you'd elect the president. Right. Uh, the electoral college is going to be in problems. So they redraw the voting maps so that you get more likely Republicans to run in safe districts and put folks who were previously Democratic office holders in voting districts that are more full of more Republican voters so they can be voted out so that you can get more Republican Congress people, more Republican senators, and therefore more Republican electoral college votes. Now, that's what this is about. Remember that South Carolina, Florida, Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, all Virginia, these were all part of the Confederacy. And these were where you had the largest population of black folks during the enslavement period. And these were where you had the largest portion of black voters who were not in urban areas at the time of the Voting Rights Act in 65. And when those voters started voting, people started changing positions. You had more black elected officials, and you also had more formerly white elected officials who could disregard black issues getting voted out. Now Republicans knowing that the demographics are changed because you know we're going to be a majority minority population in 2020 2050 if you go if you want to keep the white folks in power republicans who are right who are right wing you're going to have to either you're going to have to either cancel black voters mm. or you're going to have to kill black voters damn and let, let, I'm just, I'm not trying to be dramatic. Hey, it's real. The right. Ku Klux Klan came up in eight, in the late 1800s to scare black voters or kill black voters. Medgar Evers was killed because he was supporting voting rights. Wow. And so we need to keep this history in mind. Wilmington, North Carolina was the site of a riot in 1898 that was designed to run black voters who had been voting a fusion ticket with white folks away from the polls so that racist right-wing white folks could win. And so this is a game. That's what these maps are about, brother. And 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 is there anything that the average, I'm just using this term colloquially, like is there anything that the average voter, average black voter can do about that? I mean, is or is that, still something that we have to advocate and press our representatives to address. Both and we have to press our representatives, but the reality is, Brother Faraji, that the representatives we're pressing are oftentimes the beneficiaries of these of these bad changes. Mm. From Arkansas, and I live in Pulaski County, okay? The, the central start part of the state, the state capital is in Little Rock. You would think I would live in one congressional district. My my county has been voted into three congressional districts since 2020. Jeez. Now, you think somebody is out of their damn mind. I'm a preacher, so I did say damn. Right. Out, out of damn mind. Do something. But no, they're not out of their mind. This is the wickedness of this. And so we can't go to the politicians who are beneficial of this and say, change that. What we got to do. It's what happened in Arkansas. We filed lawsuits, and the lawsuits have been filed. But unfortunately, the lawsuits are lining up in the courtrooms of Trump judges mm. who are anti-voting rights. So what's the next move for that? No, the next move for us around the country is to vote anyway. We vote anyway. The key to this issue you're talking about today is in these battleground states, North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Nevada, and Michigan, and Georgia, Wisconsin. Uh, these are battleground states. Arkansas is not a battleground state, but Georgia is. We know Donald Trump lost Georgia. If black folks turn out and vote big in Georgia, Donald Trump will, will not win. If black folks vote big in North Carolina, big in Michigan. Now, of course, you got to have people to vote for, 
and that's the next issue. But the voting rights issue means we got to turn up. That is it. That is it. Cindy D said, vote anyway would make a great T-shirt. So you might get something started today here, Pastor. That Show vote up. anyway, regardless of what, vote anyway. Look, Pastor, our time has certainly been very well spent. But when we, I, I got to bring you back because you brought up the Electoral College issue. And, um, and I got to go back to this piece that I, I think NBC News put it out there just a few days ago, saying that now the Electoral College system is up for debate. And people are really, really getting concerned about this because you might have a situation where, and, they, and they're saying that on the Republican side, their, their way of counting electoral college votes are different from how Democrats are counting electoral college votes. So we're going to have to like, you know, sort through all of that mess because our understanding of the electoral college as, as constituents and as voters is one way. But if the Republicans start to say, ah, well, you know, Trump, he actually got more votes on the Electoral College side. And then Biden is saying, and the Democrats said, no, we got more vote. And then the popular vote is not even considered. Then where does that leave the, the, the voter? And black, white, Asian, Latino, whoever's going to the polls, where does that leave the American voter? So I want to talk to you a little bit more about that the next time we have you on. But I appreciate your time today, Pastor. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for talking to me. It's good to see you always, brother. Keep you it up. Too, brother. Thank you. All right, folks, we got to take a quick pause. Let's switch from voting to talk about health and wellness. And let's talk about that great celestial uh, phenomenon today of the eclipse. We're going to be checking in with Dr. Bridget Cole Williams uh, to, to give us the latest on how this eclipse could possibly impact your health and mental your mental health and wellness. We'll talk a little bit about that and so much more. Stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. As president, I put money in pockets and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. All right, folks, welcome back to The Culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Just had a fantastic discussion with uh, retired circuit court judge and pastor Wendell Griffin as we talked a little bit about the changing landscape of voting rights all across the country. He's looking at some of the key states, the battleground states that we need to keep our eyes on, states that have a lot of Black folks in it. And um, it is very interesting that many of you have expressed this sentiment, and I totally agree with you, that um, this voting situation, the game keeps getting changed, the rules change, the finish line changes all the time. 
and this becomes a real problem. So if you didn't miss that conversation, you want to definitely be, definitely be a part of Team Replay. Take a look back at it. And I hope you are empowered by that because the pastor really was just letting us know that the power is still resting in the hands of us as the voters and we should not relinquish that power and not give up. So great, great discussion that we had there. Also in the first half, we talked about former, uh, we're talking about current President Biden, excuse me, uh, President Biden and how he's moving forward on relieving more student debt. As of right now, his student debt relief has, has um, affected 30 million people. And um, you know his original plan was 43 million. So it will be interesting how he continues to do that work of trying to relieve that burden for so many uh, student loan borrowers. And more importantly, he trying to close the gap just a little bit for those who have been marginalized, talking about black and Latino communities that we have seen some gap with versus uh, our white counterparts on that issue. So we, we talked about that as well. A lot to discuss and certainly we want you to check it out. We're also streaming live on our website at uh, blackstarnetwork.com. Just go to our website today, folks. Download the app for free. Follow us on social media. We would love to connect with you, as well as we're looking for your support. Every, everything, every little dime, nickel, penny, whatever you can give, it really, really matters. And it means a lot to us to continue to power us through this movement in this space. And I just want to invite all of you, if you haven't had a chance to give yet, please do so. You can do so right now. You can do so during the show, later on in the show. And I want to give a big shout out to Faith Village Research for being a Bring the Funk fan club member coming in at a level one. That's right, Faith Village Research. Thank you so much, Faith Village Research, for your donation. It means a lot. Again, folks, we're not counting dollars. We're not looking in your pockets and everything. But we know that if you give in 2024 to, to a cause, to an effort that's bigger to, than you, then that just that just calls for celebration. So it doesn't matter how much you give, it's as long as you give, your mind and your heart and your spirit is in the right place. And I just wanna say thank you on behalf of the culture and here in Black Star Network for your support. It means a world of difference. Also, we are streaming live on Amazon platforms. You can definitely check us out on Amazon News and your Fire TV. You can find us on Amazon Prime Video. Also, we can find us on the Prime Video app on the Live TV, the news, and find us on the Amazon.com on the Prime Video, then Live TV, the news. We're on the Free V Network, so you can find us on the Free V Network. And make sure that you watch us there on now on the news for Free V at Black Star Network, as well as Plex TV, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go to Black Star Network or find us on the Live TV, the news, and opinion. Look, we're going to take a quick pause. When we come forward, we're going to check in with Dr. Bridget Cole Williams, who's going to give us the latest about the celestial phenomenon that we all experience in some way, shape, or form today, talking about the eclipse. There's so much conversation, so many discussions about whether this eclipse will have an impact on your mental health, your wellness. Astrologically, a lot of folks are saying that this is the time and the mark of a new beginning, and I would love to hear what you got to say about this. So we'll talk to Dr. Bridget for this week's Reclaim Your Wellness when we come forward. Stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and Black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. He stoked racial violence, attacked voting rights, and if reelected, vowed to be a dictator and, quote, get revenge. We can't go back. As president, I put money in pockets, creating millions of new jobs, and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.
right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. All right, folks, welcome back to The Culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Folks, if you looked outside today, there was a major, major moment that we all experienced. Here's some images. Take a look at this. And let's remove the lower third on this, please, Lise, so folks can see it. Thank you. This is uh, from Vermont, Burlington, Vermont. These are images that CNN has taken from Burlington, Vermont. And uh, we're talking about this celestial phenomenon that comes every so often, which is a total solar eclipse that has gotten the whole country looking to the skies. And joining us today for this week's Reclaim Your Wellness, of course, is our dear sister. She serves as a family physician. Well, let's do this. Let's bring her in the proper way. Let's check in now with Dr. Bridget for another installment of Reclaim Your Wellness. Dr. Bridget is out in the streets today. Wait, we got we got we gotta hear you. There you go. There you go. You got it? Yeah, I got you now. Hi, Faraji. How are you today? I'm good, Doc. How are you? I know that you uh you actually are about to do an event around the eclipse today, right? Absolutely. So I am at the Citadel, which is an event space here in Columbus, Ohio, um, where we are doing a sound bowl meditation and uh yoga massage event um, here in Columbus at the Citadel. And so it was a great opportunity to bring the community together to kind of celebrate and be mindful um, during an event that does not happen that often um, where we can see it in the U.S. So we're really excited. It was a very spiritual and relaxing time for us to view it. So did the event already happen or how, how did that go? Well, you know how we are. The event happened, but the you know the event keep you know, you know the how event we are. keeps going. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just stepped outside for a minute. I can go inside so that you can see a little bit of it. But it was yeah, really a great a opportunity look. to yeah. um, bring us inside and um, you know come together for an event like this. So I mean, as we as we as you taking that walk inside, Doc, I, I want to. You did see the eclipse. You were able to see it. I'm 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 assuming, right? Yes, yes. I sent you all sorts of pictures today. Okay. All right. Let me do this. Let's let's do this. Uh, because Doctor, uh, let me see this. Here. We're gonna we're gonna try to get those pictures, and we posted some images. But here is Doctor Bridget at an event for the eclipse. This is our, um, and Doc, what are we looking at here? So, so break this down for us. 
So we are, um, they're doing a wonderful um, yoga and meditation session right now. Um, we're also looking at massage that's happening. Um, we have a pastry vendor over here. And also we have the cannabinoid and um, supplement bar as well. And uh, it was just a really great opportunity to yeah. kind of celebrate a special time. Hopefully, yeah, I don't know how well my, my camera. Yeah, yeah, because we might need to step out just because of the connection there. Because it's a little choppy, but it's all good because I'm glad you gave us some images of what we're seeing here. So this is our folks are, are doing some meditation, and I don't want us to disturb the meditation. But so, so that, talk to us a little bit about why folks are even taking this route for this particular moment, because I've been kind of reading and, and checking out on stuff online. And I remember, uh, let, me just, let me just post this. Let me just go to this piece. I was reading uh, one blog, and they had some, some official statements coming from NASA. This is from eatingwell.com. And they were making the point that NASA said that there is no verifiable link to show that the, that the eclipse will affect your, your health in any way. It's just like any other celestial um, event, you know, whether it's like a full moon or something like that. But some people are saying, nah, NASA, you might be wrong on that. that, that it does affect the mood. It does affect the energy. How do you see this? How should we see this, Doc? So when you talk scientifically about this phenomenon of the moon coming in between the Earth and the sun and creating this total eclipse, this moment of darkness, um, in reality, it, will that one you know, a few minutes have an effect on your health? Not necessarily. But I definitely believe in, in experiencing it today. I think it can have a really great opportunity to affect you spiritually. Um, people see it as a time of transformation. Um, some people see it as an opportunity for restart. I mean, anytime you're talking about a rare natural event, I think if you don't take a moment to step back and yeah. think about that you had the opportunity to observe this experience, I, I think you're you're missing something. So um, no, it's a great. I think it's a great opportunity and um, to do a sound bowl, a sound, a sound bowl session um, yeah. during the eclipse. It was it was an, a beautiful experience. What was that experience like for you, personal? Um. It made me realize I work a little bit too much, Faraji. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting around and I'm seeing all these people really be in such a beautiful moment of meditation. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm working my bar um, today the, with different supplements and, you know, cannabinoids and what have you. And... It made me realize how I need to really take a moment to set back myself. And um, the sun, if you've never done a sound bowl session, it is, it's, it's an incredible soul stirring um, experience. And adding the actual clips in at the same time, uh, it's, it was really beautiful. Absolutely. And I've, I've definitely been a part of those sound bowl sessions. I've had, I did one in LA here. Um, and it it, it, it it was changing. Like, I felt the energy within me change. I think that the, 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 the greatest challenge is, is that, you know, we check into these type of experiences, these type of events. We feel great. But that, that feeling of greatness, that good feeling kind of dissipates over the days coming because life happens. Life be life. And so when life happens, it's always about, like, how do you keep, that same energy, that same consistency in that. What would you say to that, Doc? So my recommendation would be to take a moment and journal, um, to document the experience that you've had 
during that sound bowl session and whatever experience that really was moving to you because you want to be able to go back to those feelings and to those emotions yeah. so that you can utilize it for later. So it's kind of like packing it away. Yeah. So you can back and revisit it because we think we're going to remember. We think our body is going to remember. But like you said, when life starts happening, we don't. Right. But documenting it, writing down the emotions, very detailed and with um, just very specific uh, aspects to it can kind of bring you back to that moment. Absolutely. Uh, I want to take a quick pause. When we come forward, let's continue the conversation with Dr. Bridget, who is in the streets, y'all, as she is doing the work that she needs to do. Um, looking at the situation of this uh, total solar eclipse, looking at the impact that it has on our health. I want you to pose your questions, crew. Share your thoughts. Post your questions in the chat as we're streaming a lot on Big Brother Roland Martin's Facebook page and his YouTube channel. And I would love to get your take on what you saw and what you have experienced so far today with this celestial phenomenon of this eclipse. Um, the, it, and that only happens every so often. It only happens every so often. The, again, CNN reported earlier this morning that 99% of the United States of America would be able to see some part of this eclipse. And a lot of folks around the world are also have experienced it. What did you experience? Post your comments. We'd love to hear from you. And stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and Black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. As president, I put money in pockets and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, Visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real um, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? All right, folks, welcome back to the culture here on the Black Star Network. We are in our segment, Reclaim Your Wellness with Dr. Bridget Williams, MD. And Dr. Bridget is in the streets on location as she's doing the great work. What are, you are in the streets. When you say it, it sounds different. <laughs> when, you, when you say it, I don't know what we're in the streets. Well, it's the culture. That's the way we say it at the culture. Like, oh, you out in the streets, man. Yeah. Well, when you say it, it sounds a little different. You know. <laughs> well, you are doing the work. You are on assignment. Uh, actually, this is the work that you do where you go out to have the, and be a part of these events, especially around health and wellness, yes. and try to bring people to some understanding. Like, you know, as you are a licensed, certified medical doctor. Yes. Um, so this is not just like you just say, oh, let me start a new career all of a sudden. You are an actual doctor. So for those who may be like, who's Dr. Bridget? She's a doctor. Yeah. Um, but you are doing this work. But many people are actually wondering, Doc, and I see folks checking in. Lori Park said it was very warm in Indianapolis, but when the eclipse took place, when it got dark, the temperature changed, the wind was blowing a bit. I think it does have something to do with your body and with your spirit. And I know what NASA is saying, but I do think that there is some level of truth somewhere, and I can't, can't verify it, but to Dolores Park's point, 
there is some truth in it that something does change, whether it's the energy around you, the spirit within you, something does change. Am I wrong in thinking this, Doc? No, and, and I agree with you. I think what NASA has to, first of all, they have to keep people calm, right? So if right. That, that some medical phenomenon is happening with the solar, there are already people that are hiding in their basements right now. If you said that there was some physical transformation and that you had no control over it, you would have people going absolutely out of their skulls, right? So you don't want that. And if you're talking about data, and that's what NASA is really collecting, right? If you're talking about the mass amount of people that will visualize this um, phenomenon, probably as far as numbers, many people probably won't feel anything at all. And right. Well, and so, you know, the 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 information they're sharing is based on mass numbers, not necessarily on individual experiences. So to say, is it possible to have some sort of physical or emotional experience? I think it is possible. But as far as the data and numbers, you probably won't see that on a mass scale. Right. It's not like something you can, quote unquote, record. It's not like. Oh, how many? What, did you have experience a spiritual experience today? How about you? It's not that type of thing. It's really going into it. But here's the thing that there are people today who are looking at this phenomenon and will say, this is the mark of a new beginning. This is the start of something different. Um, a couple of folks in the chat said this. Uh, Lydia Brown said, a new era has us been ushered in. What do you say as a medical doctor when as uh, as one who comes from the traditional space but also is in in the alternative healing space as well well how should we see this 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 phenomenon you know i think as humans that we look for meaning and we look yeah. for signs in so many different ways and so many different um opportunities and so i do think that i'm sorry i i do think that we as humans need something to kind of give us a reset, um, particularly in a stressful world. And yeah. so I think this is the perfect opportunity to take a moment and uh, say, you know, maybe it's time for me to, particularly it's something so rare, like the next total eclipse that can be seen in the US is gonna be in 2044. Wow. So there are now keep in mind, there are other eclipses that happen that this alignment happens, some of them not total, like every about two to four years, there's some level of an eclipse, but not necessarily um, something that we can see in the United States. And so for us to be able to see it and, and if you, you know, there's a lot of theories around where the the cities that the eclipse goes through and what that means and, you know, what have you. And, then you add in the cicadas and the East Coast earthquake, you know, you, you got a lot of people, you know, picking their heads up and paying attention for a change. Um, so true. I think it can mean what you want it to mean. Yeah. I think it can connect with where you are in your life. Um, so I, I say take advantage of that. You know, I'm actually, I definitely see it as a restart and an opportunity to kind of reevaluate and a lot of people see it as a moment of transformation. And, and Doc, when we have these type of moments, right, one of my big criticisms about our particular culture is the fact that we may acknowledge something, but we don't necessarily take the, nece to take the time to fully like process it, right? Like we don't process it, whether it's something tragic or whether it's something triumphal. Very true. We, we, we triumphant. We don't process these things. We kind of like, oh, it's an eclipse. Hey, it's, here's a natural phenomenon that comes every 20 something years. And as a result, we're just like, oh, this is nice. Okay, let's back to work, guys, back to work. And so how does a person who who's a part of this type of culture, how do you carve out a space to say, you know what? I'm going to take a time to reflect, to process, and then to, to, to recommit myself in some way, shape, or form. Because that's that's hard to do in our culture. It is hard to do. What, what I, you know, I said initially, record the moment, record how you're feeling and the experience that you had, and take the time to do it. 
you know, um, we are a way too fast paced, stressful world, but taking the time to write down what that felt like and what you were thinking and what you were feeling in that moment will help. Number two, take that, that feeling and then create goals that mm. you will are, are willing to commit to. And many times if we're, you know, overly ambitious, we're writing down 20 goals, write down two, mm. two goals to look at and make a difference. It might be to go to a sound bowl session. It might be to communicate and, you know, mend some broken relationships, whatever it is for you. But yeah. um, to take that moment and make it mean something, that's that's a quest. That's a personal journey. Um, I guess my recommendation is don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. We're going to take another quick pause. When we come back, let's get some final remarks from the doc. And she's out there doing the great work she's doing. And, of course, from you folks, stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. As president, I put money in pockets and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, Visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real um, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? All right, folks, welcome back to The Culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Uh, this is our segment, Reclaim Your Wellness, with Dr. Bridget M.D. And Dr. Bridget is has been um, talking to us that she was a, a part of an event, a healing event, around the total eclipse that we experienced earlier today. And I think at this point, Doc, most of the country has seen this eclipse. I think it's kind of gone its path, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I, be I believe so. Um, you know, it just lasts a few minutes. Um, yeah. But even with the events here, way past the time that it had, um, you know, completed, we continued the sound bowls. The yoga just started. The drum circle will happen a little bit later. You know, we have to look at um, opportunities that rarely come around and make it a day of celebration, um, make it a day of uh, remembering and, and, and being connected. And so, yes. uh, you know, I have a, a number of friends that said that they were just going to not look at it at all or be in their basement or they thought the world was going to end. And, you know, I, I hate that, uh, they miss something that they'll never see again. I, I faintly remember being a kid and my grandmother taking me outside, um, to see the eclipse in 1979 and di of course didn't really understand what was going on and of course they didn't even have glasses back then so we could only look at it so so well you know at that that moment but these are you know once maybe twice in a lifetime um opportunities and uh in it's it's an opportunity to create a memory so that's, that's interesting because doc you know <clears throat> when we think about that there is so much fear that is that clouds us from totally um, experiencing a natural phenomenon like this, right? And like you said, you got people that's in the basement. Some people will say this is the end of the world, and, and you know, it's like 
we shouldn't be afraid of what's natural. But I feel like that is that is part of the issue, right? That is part of why we are disconnected. That is part of why, you know, when you start talking about the work you do with alternative health and, and, and natural healing, natural healing work, it turns people off because we have been made so afraid of the natural. How do how do you how do you have that conversation? How do you help people to understand that what's natural is not against you, but it's actually for you? Well, the problem is, is that sometimes what's natural and meaning what we can't control. So the fear comes from the fact that it's not controllable, right? Mm, okay. So we create fear around things that we can't control. And so I think whether it's the eclipse or, you know, a lot of things that happen with our health and our body, part of my job is to help people not feel overwhelmed with things that they cannot control. And mm. it's a silver lining, possibly, you know, and, and because everything that you can't control, some is good, some is not so good. But, um, you know, it, we have to decide how bad it actually is. You know, yeah. there's, there's a way to, you know, create a, you know, a positive moment, even in the worst situation. Wow. I like how you said that, Duda, that some people are afraid because it's not controlled. And so we, it, 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 that's where faith comes in, it sounds like. Yes, I think so. I think it, you know, it, it's believing that, uh, you know, of the greater good, right? Believing that you can make it through the most difficult times. And, you know, through all of history, humans have needed to have some sort of belief system, um, had, whether it's, you know, putting, uh, belief or or a significance into inanimate things or whether it's you know faith in god you know it's we've always had to create meaning and understanding of the world that we're in and um unfortunately sometimes there's a fear-based aspect to that but yeah. we you know we have to decide whether we own that or whether we dismiss the fear um to see something more beautiful Absolutely. You said something earlier that, and I wrote the word down that really struck a chord for me, which was alignment. You talked about finding yourself and getting, why well, are you smiling? Because I, I was sitting there like, oh yes, alignment. I love it. I love it. Um, but you said, <clears throat> excuse me, you said that. And when you said that, I was like, that makes sense. That makes total sense. And I understand that, you know, even in the midst of the day, like, you know, Ramadan has come to an end uh, for the Muslim world uh, between, you know, it's pretty much has ended. But the fact is, it's like during the month of Ramadan, Muslims are encouraged to continue with their prayers to fall back into a space of alignment. My sister Lana said Ramadan, Lent, the season of Lent and many other moments like this is an opportunity for us to to reset. And it, it just struck a chord because I feel like we're in our rush to do things, to stay busy and all of that, we really do forget. We forget God in the process. We really do forget, you know, giving thanks on a daily, on a, on a constant basis, all of those things. And we, we, we put more faith in the things that we can see than the things that we cannot see. And when you said alignment, I was like, yep, this is an opportunity for alignment. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. You know, the fact of the matter is, you know, as we said, in such a fast paced world, um, we we get caught up. You know, the days become the weeks, the weeks become the months, time is flying by and we need opportunities to slow down, opportunities to take notice and, you know, I just looked up and I, you know, the clock over here says 444 and I often wear that necklace, but that is something where it, it takes me out of where I am to take a moment of appreciation, a moment to take a breath and a yeah. moment to be present. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we need opportunities to be present but in all Absolutely. sorts of different ways. Absolutely. And, and what do you say for those uh, you, you, you coming out, of course, the, the medical and science field, but some folks going to look at this and take some astrological meaning. They're going to be like, oh, this must mean my relationships, my professional career, 
And I, I can only imagine, look, look, I know that there is a huge, for lack of a better word, there's a huge marketplace for readings and astrology and horoscopes and understanding those things. And I know you're a doctor, but, do you know, not putting you on a hot seat about this stuff, but just wondering how do we balance that messaging to the messaging that you provide as a doctor and to what we get from our faith institutions. It's like a lot of people, people are in, are looking for something nowadays. And you spoke about this earlier, but I truly believe it. People are really yearning for something. They are yearning for not just meaning, they're yearning for purpose, they're yearning for direction. People are looking for something. Absolutely. You know, um, I am not gonna speak, you know, people find meaning in all sorts of things. I'm not Absolutely. going to um discredit anyone's belief or that they put behind it but when it comes to balancing whether you call it traditional medicine western medicine modern med how, however you want to look at it and whatever beliefs that you might be um connecting to this event what i i guess my suggestion is don't put yourself in harm's way yeah so, i mean don't be with um, the meaning that you're placing on something, that you are putting your health, your life, your you know experiences um, in harm's way, without you know based on what exactly, right? Um, and sometimes people will do this, and it and it can be some, you know, I hate to say, it, but a lot of that in a different way during COVID, right? people that chose not to believe in COVID and then end up getting it. And in those final moments, they wish that they had taken it more seriously. Mm. And so that, that is what I mean. Like, don't put yourself in harm's way where something that you're, you know, choosing to believe in, but what's sitting in front of you could actually be harming, you know, it'll harm you. So you, you just don't want to go take it too far. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there any particular moment or any particular story or person that you came across in today's event that really uh, that really struck a chord for you? I mean, sitting there and watching the people during the sound bowls and the meditation, you know, there was this calmness. Um, the participants, you know, there were people that I saw with tears as they were mm. sitting and um, meditating and taking in that moment. Uh, and when they did get up, you know, you there was, you could feel that an energy had shifted, you know, uh, that uh, that they experienced something. Um, and, you know, everyone experienced different, but they had a moment, they had an experience. Um, and, and that was, uh, it was really beautiful to watch that as well. I think it's pretty cool, Doc, that you 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 open yourself up to this. You you know what it is. I I was trained obviously in Western medicine. Um, I think I I drank the Kool Aid, and I you know when it comes to research and data, I believe in it. But I also, I guess you know, I became. Uh, jaded at some point that yes i believe the research but then i found out how much of the research is biased right um i believe in pharmaceuticals um to help people but then it's not so much um holistic medicine works or not but how i was socialized to turn my nose up at it mm. and that is what kind of got me you know why why is it not, why is it just some other practice? Why am I being taught to discredit it? And I think when I started analyzing what did I know as a physician, what did I believe and what did I not believe and what had actual data and what had, you know, credible data. And, uh, I, you know, I started just becoming the scientist that you're supposed to be as a physician to then decide that a more um, patient-focused approach was needed. You know, focusing on, I started following what my patients asked. 
you know, words. I started following what they what they were looking at, and then, you know, and that's the way it should be. There should be a relationship there um, that is trusted. That is awesome. That is awesome, Doctor Brooks. I cannot thank you enough for you know doing the work that you're doing. But more importantly, you're like I said, you the fact that you're open and, and and honest, and you're saying, look, I'm trying this. I'm going down to this process too, and. I don't think you're jaded. I think you, your eyes were open to a few things, right? <laughs> you, you know, I mean, you know, you understand it. And I think that because you have a real heart for this type of work, that it is kind of inspiring your path to 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 go down the path that you're going and say, well, let's let's me do instead of just all science and all traditional medicine based upon Western ideology. Let's incorporate some other things from from the East. Let's incorporate some other ideas. Let's incorporate some other methods because it's an integrative process. It's not just about mm -hmm. healing the body. You got to heal the, the mind and the spirit and the soul as well. And so it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a, it is a huge, huge undertaking and it requires a lot of a certain person to do that great work. And I see you doing that great work, but more importantly, sharing what you've learned from your journey with us, for us to consider. You're not saying it, and, and you know, we always talk, but you're not saying, hey, this is the way to go. You're saying, look, this is what happened with me. This is what I tried, but I'm going to give you a chance and give you a choice for you to try to figure out what happens and what's best for you. And I or, think that speaks volumes. On, what's going on in this place? like this incredible community that I have patience in. Yeah. Right? Um, the community that are holistic healers, um, community that are friends, community that's, you know, I, I base mo very little on my own experience, but I, you know, I have thousands of patients over the years. And so a lot of what I base things on is their experience that I share, right? What I learned about their, um, their their journey and yeah. and that and and of course the research that i've done and the education that i've received and when you blend that together you know hopefully it's something unique for every patient but absolutely um, yeah absolutely dr bridget can't thank you enough thank you for being in them streets Thank you for doing the work that you're doing. And more importantly, thank you for breaking this thing down. Having a very, very, I love this conversation about the eclipse and the health and our health. But thank you so much, Dr. Bridget. Folks, make sure y'all follow her on all social media platforms at Dr. Bridget MD. She always having these conversations. She's always out and about um, and, and trying to inform people. And more importantly, uh, trying to bring health and wellness to a new level with integration of science and the research and traditional medicine with alternative healing as well. So it's a great mix. Dr. Bridget, thank you for being so good for the culture. Absolutely. Thank so, you, Reggie. You're welcome. Uh, we got to take our final pause. When we come forward, let's share with you with pin, uh, post, uh, trends, posts, and doing the most. Stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse, and black America felt it the most. He cut health insurance while giving tax breaks to the wealthy and big business. As president, I put money in pockets and capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. There's a lot more to do, but we can do it together. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, Visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real um, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?
Hi, folks. Welcome back to the culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. I hope y'all enjoyed that part of the conversation. Dr. Bridget, man, she's always bringing something for us to think about. And um, there's been so much talk about what this eclipse has done or will do or how it will affect people. So this will be very interesting. I'm just looking at some of the comments. Laura, you said, I wonder how many babies that were born during this eclipse. I mean, that will be very interesting. It's a very short period when you really think about it, but in the big scheme of things. But that is very, very interesting. Uh, let me see. Cindy, you said, thank you, Dr. Bridget. Very interesting and inspiring. Yes, it was. Thank you, Cindy D, for posting that. Uh, Mingli Natasha said, you said, all I know, my legs started hurting around eclipse time. <laughs> Your bones started starting to starting to get a little little different, huh? Uh, mean. So I hear that. Thank you so much for posting that. Pastor Damon, you said my reset is daily. Scripture says in Lamentations three twenty two to twenty two that we have new mercy every morning. Amen. New mercy every morning. Woo! That's a good word right there, Pastor. Thank you so much, Brother Damon. Truly appreciate that. Um, Lana, you said, I'm paying attention. God is trying to tell us something. Woo. Absolutely. Absolutely. He is always trying to tell us something. You just got to be, and we got to make sure that our eyes are open to see what he's saying. Uh, Brian Christian, my brother, you said, I would like to see a full eclipse that covers the whole planet. Then I will be amazed. Uh, yeah, that should be pretty, pretty interesting. And Cindy, you said the world around us is bigger than we are. That's what something like this brings. Absolutely. This was a phenomenon, a global phenomenon that you see something like this, a total, total solar eclipse happening. It is absolutely interesting. So I appreciate that. And thank you, Lori, for saying today's show was very good. I truly thank you for that. We hope that uh, you did enjoy the show today. Very quickly, as we close out, um, I saw this story and I was like, we've been talking about our sister Beyonce for, for the past few days last week. And it is now official, folks, moving forward. It is official that she is the first black woman with a number one country album. How about that? In addition to the Billboard 200, Cowboy Carter also rests the tops of Billboard's top country albums, Americana folk albums, and top album sales chart. Wow, Beyonce. Yeah. Her venture into country has brought in major numbers for her, uh, earning 407,000 equivalent album units in the first week in the U.S. It is also, in addition to topping the Billboard 200 list, Texas Hold'em is also the, uh, showing that, that, the singer, that Beyonce is also the first black woman with the number one album on the top country albums list since it first launched in 1964. Uh, the LP is also experiencing the biggest week for country album sales since last July when Taylor Swift dropped the re-release of 2010's Speak Now. Isn't that interesting, y'all? Isn't that interesting? So congratulations to Beyonce. And I know the Beehive is very, very happy. And it just goes to show you that a change is coming. Absolutely. All right, look, that was going to do it for us, folks. But tomorrow, speaking of music, if you haven't been keeping your eyes open on hip hop, tomorrow I want to have a, I'm going to check in with my sister Tasha Love as we talk about this J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. For those hip hop heads, y'all, we, we all were expecting something. But J. Cole did something legendary, as some call it, um, as he talks about, uh, he essentially apologized. Say, I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to do this to my brother. I don't want to be in no battle against a man that I love and respect. And so tomorrow we're going to talk about the impact of his deciding not to be a part of a beef with Kendrick Lamar and how that has impacted the culture. It is a change coming, folks. It is a change coming. I really believe that things are changing for the better. I think consciousness is on the rise in this country. I think that our activism is on the rise. And I'm not talking about just in the streets. I'm talking about in our thinking that a lot of us are getting to a different place because we're seeing so many things happen in this country each and every day. We talk about it here on the show. Brother Roland talks about it on his show. But at the end of the day, I think each one of us, you know, whether you tune in just every day or every so often, I think you can feel it just like as much as I can feel it. 
we're at a point now and black Americans saying enough is enough. We need something different. We need a new destiny. We need a different reality. We need to live a different type of way that's really for our benefit and not to our detriment. So there is a lot of things that we're going to continue to talk about, but we're going to have that discussion tomorrow. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. I want to thank my fantastic production team. I want to thank Lise and Keenan. I want to thank Maddie and Chris and all of those who are part of this production. I thank each and every one of you. Make sure y'all go to our website today at blackstarnetwork.com. Download the app for free. Follow us on social media at Black Star Network because your support means a world of difference to us. And so we would love to have you to be one of our investors. Big shout out to Mr. Barry Gray, who is another Bring the Phone fan club member at a level one rate. Barry Gray. Barry, thank you so much. Truly, truly appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for uh, putting something in a pot for Black Star Network and doing it while you are tuning into the culture today. I hope that you appreciate the show and hopefully this won't be the last time we hear from you. So Barry, thank you so much for your donation. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for me. Make sure y'all stick around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Roland Martin is coming at you. More conversation about politics and all that matters to Black America right then and there. As always, never be afraid to change, uh, to challenge what's wrong. Stand for what's right while being yourself in the process. God willing, we will be back tomorrow for another exciting edition. I got some great conversations lined up for you tomorrow. Make sure y'all follow me on social media at The Real Faraji. I would love to connect with you on Instagram, The Real Faraji, and on the X platform at Faraji. And let's continue to build the community. Thank you so much, crew, for joining me as always. Thank you for making this show so great. And more importantly, we look forward to talking to you tomorrow for another exciting edition of The Culture right here, only here, exclusively here on the Black Star Network. Have a great evening. Peace.